Welcome to module 33 of uh, Point Set Topology Part 1. Last time I mentioned some property of, of real numbers, namely if you remove a point from an R from a from R, then it gets disconnected. How so does it prove that? Intermediate value theorem from real analysis that will give you automatically that r minus any point is not path connected so intermediate value theorem is something which is built in in the definition of or in the construction of or in the creation of real numbers let us take a closer look at it which is because it is very very relevant to the a concept that we are trying to develop here. So I am just recalling it here. I am not going to prove intermediate value theorem. Let f from j to r be any map where j is some open interval. Given x less than y and fx less than some point z less than fy, there exists a w inside j such that W is between X and Y and FW is equal to Z. So that is the intermediate value theorem. As a consequence of intermediate value theorem, you must know, you must recall that we get Rolle's theorem in calculus about functions which are differentiable in the open interval and blah, 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 right? Also remember that Rolle's theorem is false if we replace the codomain by Rn, where n is greater than or equal to 2. The simplest example I would like to recall is theta going to cos theta sin theta, which is differentiable everywhere. Okay, the derivative is never zero, but several two points may have same same uh, uh, endpoints and so on. So this is an easy example where. You don't get Rolle's theorem. In any case, there does not seem to be any meaningful way to generalize intermediate value theorem if you replace the codomain with any other than some order topological space. Because you want to say intermediate value, what is the meaning of intermediate value? Given two values, what is the meaning of intermediate value? That doesn't make sense unless there's an order. So you must better take some order topology, that's all. So that's one way of, of uh, getting, uh, oh, things don't work and so on. But you don't give up. So try to keep the codomain as R itself and try to look at what is happening to domain. Why do you need the domain to be an interval itself all the time? That is not obvious. So here is an example where a domain need not be an interval. Okay. <clears throat> so let X be a any path connected space. We have defined what is a path connected space, right? Recall that a path connected space means any two points can be joined by a path. So take such a space X. Let F from X to R be any map. Map means of course continuous function. Now given x and y in a, inside x, there is nothing between uh, saying that x is less than y or y less than x and so on. Okay, But z belonging to R, so said z is between fx and fy. These are elements of R. So then I say that there exists a point w inside x such that Fw is equal to z. So it is at least part of the like intermediate value theorem. Intermediate value has been obtained, though 
the point wherein it is attained, that point may be, we don't know, you can't compare it with x or y, because there is no comparison in x. This is quite satisfactory <coughs> generalization of intermediate value theorem. Okay. So how does it prove it? One line proof. You have two points x and y inside x. Join them by a path omega from 0, 1 to x such that omega 0 is x and omega 1 is y. Now we apply intermediate value theorem to f composite omega. Omega is continuous, f is continuous, the composite is continuous. This will start from 0, 1 and ends in the r. So IVP is applicable. Okay. So you get a t between 0 and 1 such that f composite omega t will be between fx and fy. This omega t is precisely the point some w here. Okay. So put omega t equal to w, then you have w is equal to that. Over. So now comes the next question. You have done something fine, but I am not satisfied. Can we replace the path connectivity assumption on X? Okay, assumption on this domain here with some weaker condition in the above theorem. Okay, finally, I don't want to get into this path is at all. Is there some way of telling that? Why I'm telling you that? Why I'm asking that question? You may ask why this question at all. You know, you can question the question. So there is another point of view. Instead of answering that, I will take note, look at the another way. Consider the union of two non-intersecting closed disks inside a metric space. If you don't want too much of that, you can do it in R2 or R3 and so on. Any R. But they must be non-intersecting closed disks, let us say. Okay. Immediately, your intuition tells you that there is no path from one to the other. Okay. So that space, the union of two non-intersecting disjoint closed sets, closed uh, disks is not path connected. Why? Have you proved it? Now you can't use intermediate value theorem. Intermediate value theorem needs uh, uh, needs your uh, uh, space to be what you know codomain to be R. If you are doing it inside R n, there may be a way to convert it, like we did the conversion here. But I am taking arbitrary metrics, uh, metric spaces. Okay, but you still feel that. This is true, right? What is true? There is no path from one point in the closed disk, this closed disk, to the other point in the other closed disk, right? Now, how to make this one rigorous? So, this is the question. How does you prove this one? That's all. Okay. So, it seems that we have been forced to use one of the most important properties of the usual topology of the real numbers here, that in the real number symbol there are no gaps. So this no gaps here, it may be difficult to understand in the case of arbitrary metric spaces, but we seem to understand it in the gaps case of real numbers. In fact, this uh, filling up the gaps was the motivation of of uh, construction of real numbers. The gaps were there in the real, in the rational numbers or any algebraic numbers and so on. Okay. But, so we have been able to convince ourselves that the real number system has no gaps. Right? So that property, we come back again and again, we have to use that one. So because of the importance of this property, 
there is need to formulate it, this no gaps con con you know this concept independent of the order of real numbers is it is there a possibility as a natural consequence of such an effort if this effort is successful will be we will be able to use it quite useful and it became quite useful because it will be available in a larger context so this is precisely the so called notion of connectivity so all this i am talking to motivate why do we need the unintuitive notion of connectivity as compared to very very intuitive notion of path connectivity which is very easy to understand okay so let us see how connectivity answers these two questions that we have raised right now let x be a topological space and y contained inside x a subspace so i am making some definitions now by a separation of y we mean two non empty disjoint subsets a and b such that the union is equal to y both a and b are closed or equivalently both are open in y so all this thing i express by just writing very cryptically y equal to a separate b to read it as a separate b so it's a the line is like a uh, you know cardboard partition <laughs> so remember what are the things both of them must be non empty they must be disjoint both of them closed or both of them open there are two different ways of looking at them the union must be y so these are the few things i mean which you have to remember all the time just by this symbol okay if there is no such separation the negation of this is very important even if one of these condition is not satisfied it is a negation so you have to understand that way okay if there is no such separation of y then we say y is connected so connectivity which is which is a very nice concept finally is defined in a negative way here okay so but i have done it as to try to put it as if as much as positive this no separation there is the separation will give you why is disconnected so if there is a separation then it is called disconnected okay i would like to include the space of empty set also in the definition it does not come all that easily because i am assuming a and b are non empty so an empty set can't be union of this one but i would like to take empty set as connected by definition okay so this is this is for it's not forced by this definition but this is convention what has this property of y to do with the space x See, I started with y inside x. Okay, x is topological space, y is subset. Okay. See, closed in y. Oh, that is the phrase that will tell you what is the relation. What do you mean closed in y? In the subspace. So I have to take the subspace topology from x to y. Okay, that is the catch. Once you take the subspace topology. you can forget about x then it close of space closed in y means close of space of y that's all okay so only to get the subspace topology this x is there that is the okay so what is what has this property to do y to do with the space the answer is we are taking the subspace topology on y from the topology that's all 
The definition of connectivity of Y is completely given in terms of the topology on Y. Sometimes it is useful to directly write down the condition in terms of the topology on X. As done in some expositions, they give you a different definition. So that definition will become a consequence of this definition and vice versa. So let me give you that. What is that? Let us denote A bar. Okay, A bar denote the closure of a subset A taken inside X. The, the closure is taken inside X for every subset A, which may be subset of Y, doesn't matter. Okay, then instead of writing this one, I can write this set of equation, namely Y is union of AB, A and B are non-empty. Instead of saying A and B are closed and so on, all that I say is A bar intersection B is empty and A intersection B bar is empty. Okay, in particular, you will see that A is contained in A bar, so A and B are disjoint will come automatically. Okay, so the only new thing is instead of saying that A and B are closed inside Y, okay, the topology of Y is not bothered about it. Everything is referred to now X. So this is another definition. You can verify very easily that this definition is the same thing as, I mean, gives you equivalent to this definition 21 here. Let us carry on with uh, this definition and do something. A space is connected if and only if the only subsets of A, subsets of A, A, A I am taking as a space now instead of Y deliberately, which are both open and closed in A are empty set and A itself. Okay, A could be one and empty set. So these two sets are improper. Proper subset means what? Non-empty and not equal to the whole space. So there is no proper subset of A which is both open and closed. So that is the connectivity. This is very immediate because suppose you have such a thing, then immediately you can write, suppose suppose you have, say B is a subset of A, which is both open and closed, and neither empty nor A. Then you can write A as B separate, B complement over. Right? Conversely also, if you use 21, then it's obvious that if A is closed, A, sorry, A, and A is closed and B is closed, both A, B, uh, that is another thing, sorry. Why I want to say is that uh, A, A is a proper set, A is non-empty, A is proper because B is non-empty. Okay, if A is closed, then B is open and B is closed, A is open. Therefore, A is both open and closed. Okay, so we have proved that one anyway. So here I have not written down. So that part at least you should do on your own. A set which is both open and closed will be called a clopen set. So this is a short for saying both open and closed, that's all. So I may, may or may not use this at all, but some authors use this one quite often. Thus, a space is connected if and only if only clopen subsets in it are what? Empty set in the whole space. Improper sets. So this re redefining this theorem, you know, reformulating this theorem, that's all. In the real analysis course, you may have learned that every interval in R is connected. I will come back to this one now. With this definition, you may have come across with this definition is what I am contending. If you haven't, we will do it here. Don't worry. 
Indeed, the following theorem tells you that connectivity of intervals, existence of greatest lower bound, existence of least upper bound, okay, greatest lower bound, least upper bound uh, go hand in hand, and the intermediate value property. These are all equivalent to each other. Therefore, the notion of connectivity that we have introduced, which we are topological now, you see, is, you know, it could have been used instead of JLB and LUB in the construction of real numbers. Okay, at least we will see that these things are equivalent, right? So I am redefining this one here, intermediate value property. A subset A of R is said to have intermediate value property if the following is true. Given any continuous function f from A to R and points from points between x, x less than y, okay. X and y are points of where I am just putting some order that where x less than y or y less than x is also allowed. That's all. And T such that T lies between Fx and Fy. There must exist A belong to A such that X is less than o, X is less than S less than Y and F of S is T. So whatever the property of inter, you know, statement of intermediate theorem, I made it into a property. The theorem says that if A is an interval, then this is true. Right? So we are going to prove that one and, and whatever. So that is the part of the game here now. So let I contain is at R. So I have used this notation I for usual interval. Here I am not making the hypothesis I is interval. Okay, then the following conditions are equivalent. I is an interval, I is connected, I has IVP. So I think I want to prove these things are equivalent. That is the whole idea. Here. Okay. So in particular, it will it will prove intermediate value property for intervals. All right. So consider now we are bringing the connectivity in between that. Consider the first special case. Okay, where I is Closed interval AB. Okay. One implies two means what? If it's an interval, it is connected, is what I would show. So take a special case now, I is AB. Suppose I is, I has a separation. That means, suppose it's not connected, then I must get contradiction that it's an interval. Everybody knows the definition of interval by that. Okay, so suppose there is a separation with A belonging to A, B belonging to B, this is my choice because once it's separation, both A and B are non-empty, you choose them. Let C be the least upper bound for A. Now I am using the least upper bound property here, okay, for, for the real numbers. The whole thing A, B are subsets of the closed interval they are bounded so take the least upper bound bounded subsets all always have a uh, least upper bound it follows that this c must be between a and b right so a is less than or c less than b and hence c is in the interval because i have assumed i is an interval so you see is inside i okay so you see B itself, so there is no 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 botheration. Since A is closed, it follows that C is inside A. So this is another property of least upper bound. I'm using least upper bounds are limit points of of the corresponding set. So in particular, C is less than B. Why? See, C is inside A, it, it, it cannot be B. Right? They are disjoint. That's all. Yeah, you are right. So 
So C is less than B. Okay. First I said C is less than equal to B. You know? Since A is an, also an open subset of I. You see, we have assumed that it's a separation. So both of them are open and closed. Okay. So A is an open subset of I. Okay. It follows that there exists X and Y such that a is less than equal to x, less than or equal to c, less than y, less than b. See, c is a point of A now. Okay. And C is and A is open. And of course, C is a B less strictly less than B. Therefore, I can always push a y here. Okay. So set C is less than y, and that y is also less than b. Okay. Right? This elementary property of real numbers. But this side, I don't know. C may be equal to A also, so I don't know that. So I have, may have to take X equal to A. I have to put equality. Okay? But what is the conclusion? Such that the whole XY is contained inside A. Why? Because A is open in in the closed interval AB. A is open in the closed interval AB means for every point there is a neighborhood of this nature inside A. That neighborhood can be chosen so that this Y is smaller than B is an extra thing. That's all. Okay. In any case, if you have chosen it contained inside A, automatically it will be less than B. That is no problem. But this contradicts the fact that C is an upper bound for A. Because there is Y also now, bigger than B. So, in other words, what I have used here is, if you have an open set, Okay, of real numbers bounded the upper bound or even the lower bound, okay, cannot be a point of A. So that's all I've used here. All right. So what we have proved? We have proved that every interval, so only sorry, closed interval is connected. Now let us prove the full thing. Now consider the general case wherein I is any interval with I having a separation. We may assume that there are points A less than B belonging to I such that A is in A, B is in B. Okay. By interchanging A and B if you want. There are one point here, one point here. Why A, this should be less than that one, I don't know. But you interchange, that's all. Then you can assume this one. We now take the restricted separation. Look at this closed interval AB. Okay. Once A is inside A, B is inside B, both of them are inside I. The entire interval AB is inside I, but by in, I is interval. That is what is assumed, right? So entire interval AB is contained inside I. That is the definition of interval. So look at that. A intersection AB, B intersection AB, they will form a separation for this AB now. Only thing you must see that both of them are non-empty. Other things will be automatic. They will be disjoint. Union will be the whole thing. And both of them are closed. Why this is non empty? It's A is there here. Why this non empty B is there here? Fine. So we are now back into the first case. So the proof is over. Now let us go to 2 implies 3. So what is 2? Two? 2 says I is connected. Okay. 3 says it has intermediate value property. Okay. So from this one, 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 uh, one implies three will come automatically. Every interval has intermediate value property. That is a theorem that you know in uh, analysis. But here we are going to prove it. So first I have to connectivity implies the intermediate value property. 
okay so let f from i to r be a continuous function take x less than y belonging to i fx less than t less than fy these are the hypotheses for intermediate value theorem okay then you have to find out some element here between x and y so that that element goes to this t here so that's what you have to do right to prove the to prove intermediate value property that's what you have to do so once you have given these things are given to and these are given to you put a equal to i intersection minus infinity you take f inverse of that all the all the points less than t take the inverse image all points which go less than t are inside inside is a all those which are bigger than are inside b okay then a and b are non empty because x is there in one and another in y is there open disjoint subsets okay suppose t does not belong to fy see we want to show that there is some z between them whatever wherever okay inside i such that f of that z is t that is the same thing as this t belongs to f of i right if t does not belong to f of y that is the only point which is missing from here then it follows that these two sets will cover i right therefore i this ab becomes a separation i equal to a separate b and that's a contradiction because we have assumed i is connected set here be careful here i have never used that i is an interval the last part i am using that i is a connected set otherwise there is a contradiction okay the theme plus one is a very straight forward thing if i has intermediate value property okay then we consider the map i from inclusion map here i to r what is the meaning of i is an interval given any two points x less than y everything be between them must be there right the inclusion map has intermediate value property means what because it is continuous now it must have intermediate value property the between x and y the y point must be there that's all So this three implies one is more of tautology. There it comes. Okay, apply the apply the property three intermediate block property to the inclusion map. Okay, in particular, it follows that R itself is connected because R is an interval. Notice that we have used crucially the fact that every bounded above set. In R, has the least upper bound. That is the only thing which you have used, which is equivalent to saying that every bounded below set is has a least uh, greatest lower bound. We have also used the fact that the least upper bound of a set A is in the closure of A, which is true in any order topology. It has nothing to do with real numbers. It is true with order topology. Indeed, the following generalization gives a two-way general result on the order topology that we have discussed in example one point thirty-nine in the in the first uh, chapter. Okay. So, you see, I wanted to show you that. three things here are all same connectivity of intervals existence and i will be so first i took only this one now i am attacking this glb ulb itself okay so here is a theorem to understand this one i have to go to 
arbitrary totally ordered sets with certain property i don't want to uh, impose myself that uh, i am working in r that will be like uh, vicious circle okay so start with a totally ordered set and give the order topology on it it is order complete if x is connected order complete means what every bounded above set has a least upper bound that's what you have to do okay and every bounded below set has uh, greatest lower bound that's mean the order complete if it's connected i want to say that it's order complete the converse you have to assume one more condition conversely suppose x is order complete and satisfies the property that given any two elements x less than y there exists a third element between them okay this is like what this is similar to uh, or equivalent to the archimedean property of real numbers okay then x is connected so connectivity is equivalent to this order completeness only thing you have to assume that totally ordered set which has this archimedean property see here there are no integers so you have to reformulate the archimedean property in some way this is the way it has been done here. so all these goes back to cantor it is not my invention or anything so i am doing this because many standard books don't have these things that's all okay suppose x is connected let a be any non empty subset of x which is bounded above say there is a b in x such that a is less than equal to b for all a in a okay that is the meaning of there is a upper bound now take b to be all x in x such that a is less than to x for every a in a okay this b is non empty because this little b is there you start with a thing which is bounded above now you take all the bounds above bound uh, upper bounds here a is less than to get for every a inside a then x will be there in, in that set okay that is b the set of all upper bounds of a now clearly b is in b and so okay and b is bounded below why a is non empty or uh, elements of a are all such that a, they are all less than equal to elements of b each element here so it is bounded below let c equal to the set of all x in x such that x is less than equal to y for every y in b what i am doing here now i am looking at all the lower bounds of b take all the all of them that is c okay then a is contained inside c because all elements of a are already lower bounds for b but this set c may be very larger much larger than than a okay so a is contained inside c now clearly x itself is the union of b and c so something either they must be inside b or they must be inside c okay that's all i am claiming here what is the meaning of that something is uh, inside b inside b means what every element of a must be smaller than that element okay if that is not true then i want to say that this element what i have taken satisfy the other property so where all x belong to the x is same to y for every y inside b okay
so now the claim is that intersection b intersection b c is empty b intersection c is empty sorry b intersection c is non empty suppose we prove that b intersection is non empty then you can take any s belonging to b intersection c then s is the least upper bound for a elements of b intersection c are bounds for bounds for a that is clear because they are also in set c they it has to be least upper bound among all the upper bounds must be least one okay so how do you prove the b intersection is uh, uh, non empty if b intersection is empty we get both b and c are first of all open subsets okay that that we have not not shown it we will show that then it will show it will follow that x is b separates c so this will be separation of x but we started with saying that x is connected okay so we have to prove that it is non empty so it is it's empty then there will be contradiction okay so i assuming that it is empty and then we are getting a contradiction to get a contradiction i have to show that both b and c are open so that's what i have to do that now so let x belong to c okay now x is not in b implies that there must be an a inside a contained inside c of course such that is x is less than a okay because b is by definition all the upper bounds of elements of a so at least one element of a must be bigger than x then x will be less than and then uh, x is not inside b so that is the meaning but then we have or so x belongs to this set namely all y inside x such that y is less than a right so this set is much smaller than c because c is set of all c is by definition less than or equal to y or all y inside b okay so x belongs to this open set contained inside c what i have done started with any element x i have got an open set by definition this is an open set by the way inside the order topology so it is contained inside c every point around every point inside c has a neighborhood contained inside c that means c is open the same thing i want to prove it for b now suppose x is inside b that means x is not inside c right this implies that there is a b such that b is less than x so that is the definition of c after all if it's not in c then there is a reference to some b which is less than x but then look at all y in z axis b is less than y that will contain this x and this is contained inside b so this prism b is open so this completes the proof that a has at least has a, a least upper bound okay the proof of the converse is verbatim as in the proof of connectivity of an interval one implies two how did you prove you have to exactly prove here instead of usual less than or equal to you replace it by this prick that solve this notation okay so this is something which you have, i have taken you some more deeper so go through this one carefully because these things are purely logical here that's all nothing here so you can try to write down try to make a picture and so on but when you make a picture 
you may be misled because then you may be already using the properties of real numbers so you make a picture but throw it away and see that everything comes from pure logic so let me do a little more here let f from x to y be a continuous function then every path connected subset z of x okay x take a path connector subset here the image of z is path connected okay so now we are trying to prove something about properties of path connected in particular if x is path connected f of x will be path connected here in particular if y if map f is surjective and continuous that continuous or there it x is path connected will imply f of x which is y is path connected so other than continuity i am not assuming anything but if you have subset here which is path connected the image is path connected this is the correct thing you have so it's one line proof assume that z equal to x okay instead of no instead of taking subset and so on you restrict the whole thing to uh, z so you can z equal to self x and f is surjective what do you mean by that you assume replace uh, y by f z z to f z take the function f itself then it is as if you have taken f is surjective okay and assuming that x is path connected now okay now suppose a b is a separation of y y equal to a separate b i must get a contradiction because i wanted to prove that y is path connected y is uh, connectivity first i am looking at connectivity later on path connectivity will see that is obvious anyway so y a and b are a and b are forming a separation for y then immediately it follows that f inverse of a separate f inverse of b the whole of x because because what because now f is surjective so f inverse of a union f inverse of b is the whole of x they are disjoint because a and b are disjoint they are closed because a and b are closed they are non empty because a and b are non empty everything is from there is pull back it is under f inverse everything comes back so this shows that x is if x is connected so is y okay if x is path connected so is y is more obvious because take two points inside y they are the image of some points here right like a and b f a and f b are there inside y now a to b join by a path f of that path f of gamma will join f a and f b maybe i should stop here now huh? okay